Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Balls. I'm rocking the t-shirt from LSW Snakes, uh, Stephen Wormsley. Um, thanks for the shirt mate, fantastic. So today is the thousand dollar challenge. This was sent to me by uh, John Williams, one of my subscribers um, who frequently comments and uh, he challenged me to pick four snakes uh, to buy for a thousand dollars. Ignore uh, shipping costs, so just uh, just the cost of the snake. I have a thousand dollars to buy four snakes. So what would I buy and what was my thought process behind those hypothetical purchases? Um, interestingly enough, um, I think many people would have immediately gone straight on to Morph Market and done a search with filters on costs of snakes and um, actually I didn't do that. That was the last thing that I did uh, when I was given the task, the first thing I thought about was what genes I wanted to work with. Uh, what genes did I want to work with? What genes did I think would combine well? What did I want to work with in future, uh, not just looking at the short term? And what genes did I think I could purchase for the price? thing that I did is to look at those combinations of genes and try to identify projects. What did I want to make with those snakes? Not just what genes did I want to work with but something specific in mind and for me personally um, that obviously means working with recessives. Recessives are more expensive. We're not going to be able to get four snakes visual recessives for a thousand dollars so that means working with heads. Um, so the genes that I selected I wanted to make sure that the snakes concerned were, were hets uh, for a recessive gene and in my case it's clown and I identified two clown projects that I wanted to work with. You could go through the same exercise with any of the other recessive genes and buy hets for those recessive genes for similar prices. You will not get visuals, uh, you'll spend all your money on one snake and have nothing left for all the rest. Um, and my initial thoughts were to buy three females and one male. Obviously you can put one male to three females uh, and that way um, with one powerhouse male you can uh, produce some nice snakes. But actually I ended up identifying two projects that number one I thought I could do and number two that um, are extremely interesting to work with and number three uh, that would give me a very good return on my investment. Uh, the other thing that I considered was at some stage in the future uh, I'm going to want to combine those two projects. So what I actually did was ended up buying two females and two males uh, with two different projects in mind. Uh, obviously. Obviously there's no right and wrong in this uh, and you could go the route of buying three females and one male. Uh, that would also work depending upon what your objectives and your goals are. But for me um, the most important thing in selecting the snakes that I wanted to purchase was my long term goals. What can I make with them and two or three years down the line when I have the first offspring from those babies what can I make combining those and breeding back hets to the parents or uh, whatever combination of snakes that I want to make. In addition to that, uh, my surplus, I wanted to be able to sell them reasonably easily, get a good return on my investment and to pump back those returns on the investment into buying new snakes. So I wasn't able to purchase all the genes that I identified. Um, when I did finally go on to Morph Market looking for the snakes that I, I wanted, uh, I couldn't get the right combinations for the price. So I had to drop uh, two of the genes that would have been nice to have. Uh, they were Orange Dream and Yellow Belly. Uh, so one of my first purchases with proceeds from the results of these four initial purchases would be to add those genes to the project either in head form or visual form uh, because as you can see the projects that I chose are going to give us a very good rate of return on our investment and provide us with a fairly substantial uh, sum of money that we could use to plough back into future projects. 
So those were my main um, targets when I identified what snakes I wanted to buy. I identified the genes, I identified the projects, I knew I wanted hets, and at that stage only then did I go on to Morph Market and purchase the individual snakes, hypothetically, um, to go to the project. Two projects I had in mind, I did purchase four snakes for the cost, and let's take a look at what I purchased. I don't just want to go on Morph Market and show you snakes from Morph Market. I actually have very similar snakes to the ones that I would purchase in my own collection. So let's keep it real. Let's have a look at some of my snakes. Um, let's have a look at some of the hets that I would have purchased. You'll be purchasing snakes very similar to these. And we'll look at the recessive clown versions of the same thing where I have that in my collection. Uh, so that you can see what the goal of purchasing those snakes is. So. so one of the snakes we want to purchase will look something like this. This is a pastel enchi female and she is going into shed she's fully grown she's actually being bred this year and the one we want will be het for clown this one is not het for anything but um, you wouldn't be able to tell anyway so this is the pastel enchi that we're looking for uh, we want one that's het for clown because that is hiding one copy of the recessive gene for this animal here and this is a pastel enchi clown and i think you can see uh, that the clown just gives a whole new dimension to pastel enchi and this will be one of the things we will be hoping to create from that relatively simple genetic combination the pastel enchi het for clown female so this is a pastel enchi clown and the snake we've purchased will give the key to producing one of these and some additional combinations on top of that so let's go to morph market and see if we can buy the right snake at the right price with the right genes and the right sex The next purchase that we will be considering is to add the fire gene to our clown project. This is a firefly male and he is het for lavender albino but the one that we're searching for is this exact same snake, firefly het for clown and we're adding the fire gene and again the clown, he is holding one copy of the clown gene which is our key to adding fire to the clown project. So he is holding the key to this animal here which is a fire clown and again unfortunately uh, deep in shed but this would be the fire without pastel and this is the clown equivalent so what we're trying to do is unlock the key to also producing um, in that pairing the firefly to the pastel NG both het for clown would produce pastel enchi clowns, fire clowns, firefly fly clowns and ultimately um, a combination with all of those the vertebrae which is the firefly enchi clown and uh, that's something that I'm trying to make this year 
and I'll just show you a picture of one of those. So by spending the 450 bucks on these two snakes, Pastel Enchi Het Clown and Firefly Het Clown, and I did buy a Firefly Het Clown with the money rather than just a Fire Het Clown. Uh, we can add an additional copy of Pastel for the money, and Firefly is a really nice combination anyway. So I spent the extra bucks on the Firefly Het Clown mail. And this is a fire clown mail, the visual version with fire in it, which um, we need to add to our project. The next project that I suggested uh, requires leopard and spot nose het for clowns. And this is a leopard het for clown. Um, this is a male and we're purchasing a female and the reason that I purchased the female leopard het for clown is that leopard generally is cheaper than the spot nose that we're going to need and females are also more expensive than males so the spot nose male is the cheapest way of getting a spot nose and a leopard so I bought a leopard female uh, females being more expensive so we got a leopard het for clown female for the price and I have one of those in my collection this is a male but we're going to use him for exactly the same job so um, I'm not uh, shooting for anything that I don't actually have in my own collection here. The projects that I'm working on are exactly the projects that we're going to be able to achieve uh, with that thousand uh, dollars. So what I've suggested buying is a leopard het for clown female like this one. And back to Morph Market. Let's see if we can uh, buy the snakes that we need for this project. And in order to produce the Batman, we need a spot nose pet for clown, like this guy here. This is actually a super pastel spot nose, and it's a female. Now the spot nose pet for clown that I suggested buying was a male and didn't have any copies of pastel. Uh, we needed to uh, just get the spot nose pet for clown in order to make the price. Uh, but the objective is the same. We'll pair those two snakes to try to make a visual leopard spot nose clown which is the batman and you'll notice that the batman a single batman offspring from those two snakes will be ten times the price of the individual snakes that we used to make them so in terms of an investment producing a batman from our two hets that cost five hundred dollars a batman is worth about three thousand uh, dollars likewise with the vertebrae if we succeed with the other project, that's a $3,000 snake from uh, spending less than $500 on two hets in order to make them. Um, that's just in a single snake. The rest of the clutch will also have additional value. So in terms of investment, a very, very sound investment. So this is Spot Nose, Super Pastel, Het for Clown Female. Um, the guy that I've suggested buying is the Spot Nose, Het for Clown Male to go with the leopard het for clown female to make a Batman. So let's go back to Morph Market and do the same thing again. Here's a summary of what I purchased, how much it cost, and 
what the projects are that I could potentially do with these snakes. And the but to give you an idea of what the return on that investment would be, um, I've priced the highest morph that we could possibly make. And you'll see that it is quite a return on your investment. So that's it guys, that's the $1,000 challenge. I hope you enjoyed um, the picks that I made, my train of thought. I don't think there'll be any surprises there that I picked two clown projects. Uh, as I said, you could go through a similar exercise with any of the recessive genes, um, pick the genes that you wanted to work with and buy the hets for a similar price and uh, potentially get into some really interesting high-end projects with just four snakes and $1,000. A very interesting exercise. I actually surprised myself that I was able to do it uh, so easily and produce some really high-end morphs uh, with my first clutch of snakes or potentially produce some really high-end morphs with my first clutches from each of those pairings and that I was able to do it for a thousand dollars is uh, nothing short of phenomenal. Um, here in Malaysia I actually think I could have done it I could have bought those four snakes, um, probably bought them from uh, one or two dealers and bought uh, uh, more than one snake from each dealer and got a discount on uh, the $1,000 that I spent. So um, there you go, $1,000, um, an excellent exercise, uh, really sharpens the mind, focuses in on projects. I really enjoyed doing it. I hope you enjoyed seeing the video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.